Okay, so one of the basic capabilities that we're going to need to be able to perform while we analyze our data is combining uh, multiple sets of data uh, where the data has some flavor of overlap in terms of the contents. Uh, so here you're looking at a very typical example, in this case two sets of data regarding a uh, group of students. On the left you have the students sorted by name with their age and sex. On the right, presumably from a different table in, say, your database, a similar set of names now with height and weight. Now, one thing to notice is that the data sets are not exactly the same in terms of the names. Uh, the left data set, for instance, has these three marked, uh, three columns or three samples that are marked red, Jeffrey, Lewis, and Mark, none of whom appear in the right-hand set. And similarly, there's a group of three on the right that are not in the left-hand data set. Now, the way in which we're going to actually combine them is using a function in Jump called join. So we're going to select one of our data sets, in this case the student's age data set, and pull down on tables to get to the join option, which brings up a dialog. Now, we're starting with the student's age, so we're going to want to combine it with the student's height data set. And you see by clicking on that, it gives us a pair of source columns that we'll be able to use to determine how we're going to say that a record in the left-hand side is the same as a record on the right-hand side so that they can be paired up. In this case, both of the data sets have names, so we'll select them. In this case, they were already selected. Hit the Match button, and you'll see that that's how it's going to actually match up the columns. Now, for this first initial demo, we'll just use the default settings, which is going to perform an inner join, and that'll be more obvious once we do it. So let's hit OK. And there you have it. We've combined the data sets. You can see that we've got the names pairing things up. And in this case, the age, sex, and height and weight of Alice or any of the other students is all put onto a single line, which makes it much easier to do a uh, interesting analysis. Now, one thing to notice here, both of the data sets started with the 20 records. As I mentioned before, they do not quite overlap. And what we're getting out here is 17 records. And these 17 records are determined by the set of names that are in both data sets, the, the proper intersection there of both data sets' names, the column that we're using for the index. Now, if you remember, when we had uh, done the original setup of the join, we had decided to set things up. Let's get back exactly to where we were. Using the defaults to create an inner join, which was to say not include any non-matches from either of the tables. If we had said include the non-matches from the main table, the main table being the one that we started with, which was the joint student age in this case, you'll see that the little icon changes a little bit. And what that's telling us is that we're going to take all of the records in the student age file and we're either going to match them into a, a record from the student height file, or if there's nothing there to match, what we're going to do is we're going to leave an empty spot, a not available or no answer kind of a spot in the records. And you'll see how that looks in a second. Let's actually go off and do it. And here you can see for those three students that did not have a pair of uh, record in the student height, we get nothing out, which is exactly what you would expect or exactly what you'd hope for. You certainly don't want to default. Uh, so that's basically the join capability. One thing to understand is that if we were to choose a different set of options, let's go back, let's kill this, go back to where we started. We can determine the way in which the lack of matches is handled by going through each of the different four combinations here. We can take the set union of all of the records by saying include the non-matches in both. That's called a full outer join. Or in contrast to what we just did with the left outer join, we can say choose all the records in the right and wherever possible match it into the records from the first data set, the primary data set. If not, if there's no available match, then just leave it blank. And so that's the join capability in Jump.